In today's session, we have Dr. Chirag Thonse, consultant orthopedic surgeon at Vikram Hospitals, Bangalore, a unit of Manipal Hospitals. Hello, doctor. Hi, hello. And in today's discussion, we are going to exclusively discuss about arthroscopic surgeries. So let's get started with some basic questions. So, doctor, help us understand what exactly are arthroscopic surgeries and who needs them the most. Arthroscopy essentially means looking into the joint. Arthro means joint and scopy means to look into it. Now, arthroscopy can be done for a diagnostic purpose or for a therapeutic purpose. Now, arthroscopic surgeries are done for various joints. May it be a shoulder joint pathology, a knee joint pathology, ankle or elbow. Uh, basically, this involves looking into the joint, identifying the pathology and setting it right. Now, who requires an arthroscopy? Uh, it's a wide spectrum of uh, patients who undergo arthroscopic surgeries. Uh, basically, it's, uh, it's more of a sports injuries related surgeries, which uh, what I would say. Most of the people coming to us for arthroscopic surgeries are younger individuals who either have ligament injuries or cartilage injuries or a certain other form of uh, structural uh, structures which are damaged either in the shoulder or in the knee joint. Uh, elderly patients can also undergo arthroscopic surgeries depending on what injury they have. For example, an uh, elderly person can have a shoulder injury, can have a rotator cuff tear, can have a stiff shoulder and these are the candidates who can also undergo an arthroscopic surgery. So doctor, what are the advantages of arthroscopic surgeries and what are its indications? There are a lot of advantages for, for an arthroscopic surgery. By large, arthroscopic surgeries are keyhole surgeries. By keyhole we mean minimal invasive surgeries. Now, this surgery usually can be performed on a daycare basis. The patient uh, is quite comfortable, less pain, minimal incision, uh, minimal day of stay in the hospital and of course the mobility is much quicker. Now another technical advantage of an arthroscopic surgery is with an arthroscopic surgery one can have a look at the nook and corner of the joint which cannot be done in an open surgery. Uh, it's quite a painless surgery. This can be done under local anesthesia or a general anesthesia. Uh, the patient's recovery is quite quick. Uh, the patient is up and about the next day. He is able to walk, he is able to bend his knee, able to move his shoulder, uh, so on and so forth. So there are numerous advantages of arthroscopic surgeries. Now when we talk about indication of an arthroscopic surgery, now an arthroscopic surgery, even though it's a minimal invasive surgery, it caters to a wide rate, a spectrum of uh, pathologies. Now, maybe a shoulder, one could have a labral tear, one could have a rotator cuff tear, one could have a dislocation of the shoulder. All these pathologies can be tackled with the, with the simple arthroscopic procedure. Likewise, in the knee joint, uh, if somebody has a stiff knee, if somebody has a painful knee because of meniscus tear or because of a cartilage lesion or if somebody has an unstable knee, uh, like uh, in, a, in a ligament injury, one could have a buckling of the knee joint. All this can be rectified with an arthroscopic surgery. So how is arthroscopy performed and how is it different from open surgery? Arthroscopic surgeries are usually uh, daycare procedures. If it's a major arthroscopic surgery like uh, ligament reconstructions, one would uh, have to stay in the hospital for a day. Now uh, arthroscopic surgery is usually performed uh, under local anesthesia. One would uh, make a nick into the joint, introduce the telescope into the joint, visualize the joint and then cater to the pathology uh, involved there. How, how different is it from uh, open surgery? An open surgery involves a big incision, it involves cutting open the joint and then performing the surgery which is avoided in arthroscopic surgery. So doctor, how is recovery like after the surgery? Are there any complications associated? By large arthroscopic surgeries are quite painless surgeries because it's a minimal invasive surgery, uh, only minimal amount of sutures on the portal sites. Uh, so the patient is uh, up and about the next day morning in a simple diagnostic arthroscopy or a simple repairs, uh, patient can be mobilized the next day. If it's a knee surgery, patient can be made to weight bear the, uh, with, with that leg and he is able to walk, he is able to bend the knee joint. If it's a so shoulder surgery, he is able to uh, mobilize the shoulder the next morning. In case of major arthroscopic surgeries like something like a ligament reconstruction or, or like a massive rotator cuff repair one would use a certain form of bracing, like one would have an arm pouch, one would have a knee brace post-surgical procedure. So doctor, can shoulder dislocation be treated uh, with the arthroscopy? Very good question. Yes, of course. Um, 
some years back these uh, these uh, kind of dislocations were not treated by arthroscopic surgeries uh, with the advent of new techniques with the advent of uh, new instrumentations and the precision of these surgeries uh, any dislocations may be knee dislocation may be shoulder dislocation this can be treated very well with the arthroscopic surgery let me elaborate on this by large what happens in a in a shoulder dislocation in a shoulder dislocation the ball of the shoulder joint is not able to be contained in the socket now hence it's called as a, a recurrent dislocation of shoulder that means at certain point of time or at certain angle of the shoulder movement the sh shoulder pops out uh, it's not able to uh, stabilize itself in the socket this is because of certain tears which which are which are inside the shoulder joint like what we call as a labral tear and a ligament which is loose uh, in the shoulder and this can very well be tackled uh, with an arthroscopic surgery where one would suture those ligaments back into the bone or the socket and solve the problem can you highlight on how are rotated cuff tears treated uh, now rotated cuff tears are uh, quite common in uh, in today's uh, times especially because people are involved in a lot of physical activities we see rotator cuff tears in two spectrum of uh, patients one is younger individuals who are involved in uh, higher end physical activities like sports they fall down and have a rotator cuff tear uh, the second spectrum of patients are uh, patients who are elderly people who have uh, degenerative tear of these uh, rotator cuffs uh, these rotator cuff tears needs to be uh, identified they need to be investigated and they need to be treated uh, in a proper manner Uh, initially if the patient has a partial rotator cuff tear or a rotator cuff sprain uh, one could uh, might as well treat the patient with a good uh, rehabilitation program if it's a complete rotator cuff tear which is painful the patient has got uh, uh, weakness in his arm movements then these needs to be tackled with the, these are the tears which need to be tackled by arthroscopy uh, arthroscopic rotator cuff repair would be the ideal option uh, for for a complete rotator cuff tear Are there any indications of arthroscopy in frozen shoulders, doctor? Yeah, in today's world, yes, of course, they are. Uh, frozen shoulder, by large, means a stiff joint. This could be either a primary frozen shoulder, which uh, which uh, which are frequently seen in diabetics, or a secondary frozen shoulder, which is secondary to uh, to any form of a pathology inside the shoulder joint. Now, a primary frozen shoulder is initially treated with medications, physiotherapy, and maybe an intraarticular injection. Uh, if the stiffness or pain is not resolved by these measures an arthroscopy is an ideal treatment for these uh, patients uh, the second set of patients are uh, patients who have secondary stiff shoulders or secondary uh, frozen shoulders they do have some other form of injuries inside the shoulder like a labral tear or else a rotator cuff tear uh, until unless these uh, tears are are tackled uh, one wouldn't get uh, adequate amount of relief so it's always better that uh, these tears or these pathologies are identified and then treated by arthroscopic procedures so doctor what are acl tears and how are they treated now anterior cruciate ligament is the most critical one of the most critical ligament inside the knee joint an anterior cruciate ligament or an acl provides a pivoting stability to the knee if a patient is running straight it's fine but a patient who has an uh, anterior cruciate ligament injury would find it difficult when he jumps runs down the stairs when he pivots any kind of pivoting activity would be a little difficult when the knee would buckle these patients need to seek medical advice and they need to be treated now how an acl injury is treated it depends on what what kind of an acl injury a patient has is it a partial acl tear or is it a complete acl tear A partial ACL tear can be treated with a good rehabilitation program, what we call as the ACL perturbation program, uh, where one would get trained to do his uh, physical activities in whatever uh, manner he would like to. A complete ACL tear would uh, mandate a, a arthroscopic ACL reconstruction, where the ligament which is torn is reconstructed using one's own tendinous tissue. it's a very successful surgery and it's a very satisfying surgery where the patient is able to return back to their sporting activities in about 9 months post surgery thank you so much for watching our series for more information please log on to vikramhospitals.com which is also a unit of manipal hospitals thank you so much